good morning or good day. Yeah. Um, so the, my inspiration, I guess I should say, for the, uh, the talk that I was going to give today came from Ryan's sermon that he gave on April 5th. It got me thinking about some things. Um, so, you know, how do we bring Christ to others when we can't meet together? Which is pretty much what he was talking about, but I, I had a few other thoughts about that. Um, there are lots of things that we don't know. There are lots of things that we can't control. Um, but here's something that we do know. So from Romans, this is one of my favorite verses, by the way, especially when things aren't going well. I like to think about this verse. So Romans 5, uh, verses 3 through 5. Uh, tells us, not only that, but we rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope. And hope does not put us to shame, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit, who has been given to us. So, again, one of my favorite verses, uh, and I think that a time like this is something a, a time especially to think, think of something like that. So, we know that verse, and we know uh, something else is that this is not the first time um, that the church couldn't meet together in a big public building. So, you know, this seems really different from us because we obviously are used to coming here together uh, weekly, uh, midweek, and meeting together. But if we look back to the early church, um, it really wasn't until 313 AD when Emperor Constantine issued the Edict of Milan, and no, I had to look all that up because I couldn't remember it, but that was when Christianity was first accepted, and it wasn't for another 10 years after that that it actually became the official religion of the Roman Empire. But before that, you know, the, the Christian church couldn't meet publicly. They couldn't meet out in the open. Um, we're going to come back to how we how this kind of compares to us again in a little bit, but let's think about you know not meeting. Now they were they were not meeting obviously because they were persecuted. And let me just you know address that really quickly because I don't want anybody to think that I'm saying that we're being persecuted by our government. Um, you know we definitely are not being persecuted like they were. We are this is being done to protect us okay particularly any of us that have underlying health issues uh, the elderly we know are going to be more susceptible to this um, so that is why we're not meeting not because our government is trying to stamp out christianity or it's not because of some uh, work of the devil that our that our government has caused us not to meet together but more on that in a little bit so we also know that the early church exploded in growth during the time that they didn't have buildings to meet together. We know that the early church was misunderstood. Um, they were largely mistrusted because people didn't understand them. Uh, a lot of the mistrust and misunderstanding was simply because of the fact that they had to meet in secret. But what some people don't realize or we sometimes forget is they, they actually were, some people thought that they were cannibals. Some people thought that they practiced incest. Again, this is because they had to meet in secret, but you know, think about how gossip works and it's not really hard to figure out how this cannibalism thing came about. You know, you start talking about the Lord's Supper and all they hear is through some channel of gossip that, that they are partaking of blood and body. Well, you know, cannibalism. And then they hear something about all of the brothers and sisters in Christ doing things together and how we are all brothers and sisters. Okay, incest. So again, it was just misunderstanding and largely because they were meeting in secret. But it's weird because I got to thinking about how we are still misunderstood today. Um, so it's a really an opposite reason. I think sometimes that we're misunderstood as far as what the church is today because we meet and most of the stuff that we do takes place at one oh, inside the four walls of 10134 Alverton Road here. Um, because of that, People don't see what we're doing. They don't see what we're doing outside of here. 
or they don't understand that. Um, and I know some of you are thinking, well, everybody knows what we're all about. Do they? Um, I've had people, and you say Church of Christ, they say, oh, snake handlers. Uh, oh, well, you guys drink the Kool-Aid, right? Talking about Jonestown for those of you that, you know, maybe too young to know what that's about. But they also, um, well, some fairly large religions think that we believe in multiple gods. Well, how in the world could somebody think that we believe in multiple gods? Okay, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. They don't understand the Trinity. We haven't gone out and, and taught them well enough or explained our position on that. And it's really easy for somebody that doesn't understand the Trinity to think that we believe in three gods. So, so just like the early church, there's a lot of things that were misunderstood about, which leads to mistrust. But perhaps it's because most of what we do takes place inside this building. So. Let's take this time to build our endurance and build our character. Let's take this time to make sure that we've not become a building-centered church. So how do we do that? Um, first of all, what is a building-centered church? The, uh, we all know, if we talk about it, we know that the church is the people. Uh, the people make the body of Christ. Uh, but for a congregation, it's really easy for our building to become the central theme and what defines us as a church. Um, and so we have to make sure that we're not doing it. This is a good time to make sure that that's not happening. We tend to look at attendance as a group. Uh, I'm sorry. We tend to look at attendance as a gauge of somebody's faith. Well, it, it's, it's natural to do that. It makes sense because the desire to attend would be based upon somebody's faith, their faith and, and attendance in the church building is a natural byproduct of our faith. But um, it's a byproduct. Attendance is a byproduct of our faith. It's not an end to what we're supposed to be doing. Um, so let's make, let's take this time away from our in-person meetings and focus on the fruit that we bear. So let's not worry so much about our attendance, but let's worry about, you know, what fruits are coming from our works. Um, and I think this is a good time to step back and focus on that simply because we can't meet here in the building together. The next thing that I wanted to talk about is uh, that we shouldn't be feeling guilty. Uh, we shouldn't be feeling ashamed that we're not meeting in person. Uh, even as we see other groups that are defying this, uh, they're defying basically good sense and science by meeting together. Um, you know, we, it's tempting to look at those groups and think, wow, you know, they must have so much faith because uh, they, they, they feel as though God's going to get them through this. But, you know, God gives us the good sense to know when we should not do things that are going to be harmful to our members. Um, some people will use Hebrews chapter 10, 25. I know that this is a verse that gets thrown away, some, thrown around sometimes. Um, as justification, especially for what, you know, meeting at times like this. So Hebrews 10, verse 25. Um, not, not neglecting to meet together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another, and in all the more, as you see the day drawing near. So I know that, again, this is kind of a popular thing that people talk about when you'll hear them talking about how someone has forsaken the assembly. And they'll they'll whip out Hebrews 10:25. So, as is often the case, when someone pulls out a single verse to prove a point, uh, the meaning of the entire passage is lost. So, you know, when we can meet together safely, that will be a wonderful day. But until then, let's back up one verse. Let's back up to the verse right before that that sometimes gets overlooked when people are talking about forsaking the assembly. And let's read verse uh, 24. And it says, And let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works. Now, that's, that's the verse that we should be looking at right now. So we can't meet together. We're not forsaking the assembly because we don't come out here in this building where it endangers one another. So what we have to focus on instead is how do we stir up 
one another to love and good works. I don't know what those opportunities to stir up love for you will be because Christianity isn't something, it's not some mathematical formula that we all follow step by step to equal a set number of new converts. Um, it's about unique individuals. Different gifts. Uh, everyone has different gifts. Everyone has different abilities. Everyone has different troubles. Everyone has different life experiences. So we shouldn't try to feel as though we all should do the exact same works. Um, Paul tells us that. Let's look all for opportunities. The opportunities that we come across that we can do and the opportunities that we come across that we're available to. A lot of it is just simply being there, being in the right place. I don't know what your opportunities will be, but I do know when people face troubles, they need help. Um, right now, people are facing more troubles than we do when everything is going well, when there's not a pandemic. During good times, not very many people are looking for help. Uh, and a lot of people don't believe that they need God. When things are going well, they think they have it all covered themselves. So I don't know what your opportunity will be, but I do know our routines are disrupted right now. Maybe you're spending more time around your family. Maybe you have more time to call people, the friends that you hadn't spoken to in a long time. Maybe people that you always wanted to talk more with and never had the time to. Maybe you can send out cards. Um, Maybe you've seen your neighbors more time in the last two weeks than you've seen them in the last two or five years. I'm not saying that you've seen them within six feet, but I've seen my neighbors out in the yard a whole lot more than I've seen them in a long time because I'm out in the yard. So when you're looking for opportunities, don't be worried about, you know, How's this going to lead to them being baptized? Or have they been baptized? Or, you know, just be looking for something that you can do. Jesus fed all 5,000 people because they were all hungry. They didn't all stick around and become followers later on. But they were all hungry and he fed all of them. So, you know, in the, in the future, baptisms will follow. Attendance numbers will follow. But for now... As always, don't worry about those things. We need to worry about our fruits. You know, what are the works? What are the fruits that we're producing? Take the opportunities. Um, you know, this is a small example. I'm not a preacher. Um, I don't mind teaching classes, but I've always leaned towards something that's a discussion. You know, I like to ask some questions, get some discussion back and forth. For me, this is really, really strange. Uh, I don't usually give a, a lecture, and I certainly don't give a lecture with no audience around to see what people are thinking. Um, but, Corey Weaver asked me if I would do this, and it was an opportunity. So, you know, maybe it's good, maybe it's not, but I wasn't going to pass the opportunity up. Uh, I don't know what, if any fruits will come out of it, but maybe some will. You know, maybe something that I say will mean something to somebody else. Um, so that's our hope. But the main thing is, you know, during this time, I think we have more time than usual because we're out of our routines that when we see an opportunity, and we need to be looking for the opportunities, but when we see it, take it. Do something to help somebody else. And I think those fruits will be what are remembered by others. All right, thank you.